I'm going to talk to you about data mining and optimization, and what the value of data is, why I believe there's value in that data, and why tools are the only way to succeed looking forward, considering the volume and the, the volume of product and the volume of that data. Now to the meat of the topic, data power, data mining, data analysis, data knowledge. With Dan, I believe you said one billion semiconductors a month going across OT. One billion. That's several dozen terabytes worth of data. The question is how do you make value out of that data? The question isn't whether or not the data itself is valuable, it's how do you turn that data into value? Because without the ability to make decisions, clear decisions, in timely decisions, that data is just a bunch of bits going around, it's taking up storage space. So the key thing I want to talk about today is the value of data mining and turning it into knowledge and decisions. This is a generic semiconductor production plug. You know, nothing special about it. You have a bump site, you're using bump, you do probe, you do assembly, you do final test, and you make a product. You collect the data and you put it all in an engineering database. That's the easy part. Now the problem we had was taking our data and actually making value out of it. Because we had it on mainline servers, you had to run special reports overnight, so it took you two or three days to get the data. Sometimes the data didn't get, mis didn't get correlated properly, so you had to then re-spin the data, to which then took you three or four more days to get the data. So to make a decision about yield, could take you seven to ten days. So the value in data mining, it's all about speed and rapid decision making. Good decision. These are generic control loops that we have. You know, basically, we have a decision at every point in the line. We're working with our fab partners to be able to get more in line data. You need to have data that is much more representative of either defect patterns inside the fab or uh, generic machine data real-time live so that you can make those decisions on what your yield is to your customers. No matter how good the boundary is, no matter how good that fab is, they don't know your customers. They don't know the decisions you have to make to keep those customers happy. And no, no fab I've met wants to freely give all their inline parametric data. But with the speed at which our customers move, and the risk decisions we have to make for business, we need to have that data live and in our databases so we can make those decisions to make our own business judgments and move forward. We've all done it for years. We've done it with spreadsheets. We've done it with servers online. We've done it with offline compute. We've done it by viewing visual comparisons with two, two pieces of paper of a, uh, of wafer maps, if you don't remember doing that and you haven't been in the business for more than 10 years. Uh, but I know I've done it more than once. And we've also done a lot of it with gut feel. The value proposition I would portray is the ability for engineers to make smarter decisions faster. Driving that improved data quality for analysis is critical to the forward-looking semiconductor marketplace. Our customers are more demanding. They're demanding faster development time. Faster, 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 better, better, better and they do not give you a get out of jail free card on quality. In fact, quality has to be better every successive product generation. So who's using OT today at Qualcomm? A little bit of everybody. It is a massively deployed tool by everybody from operations to engineering. The production ramp is accelerated. The product cost in during the ramp is where the biggest savings can be acquired. If you're ramping very fast, that every yield point is worth gold. Product quality during the ramp is dangerous. If you, if you have a huge ramp and your product quality is bad, customers will throw you out and they won't let you back in. So product quality, managing that product quality proactively is critical to success. So data mining, what does OT do and what do we want it to do? Well, we have PCM enablement. Using PCM allows us to learn yield by having that PCM top data tied to the regionality of the die on the wafer. That regionality of the die on the wafer allows us to map wafer sort, final test, 
to systems level test and customer performance data. And back and forth. Now the, the forward control loop is a great control loop because it allows you to proactively control what you ship and how you ship it. The feedback loop from customers is long and for every step is longer, but it also allows you to take that feedback loop and move it all the way back to the fab to change what the fab is doing or what your design is doing to be able to satisfy customers four to six to 12 months out. It is a very powerful system when you start looking at it in terms of a feedback and control mechanism for optimizing end-to-end -end manufacturing. Looking at OT to do a couple things. Escape prevention. If the part tests good, but it's at the margin, we all have those parts. Is it really good or is it really bad? It's at the margin. Which one is it? The value of OT in this area is that you now have data. You have your PCM data. Hopefully, we'll soon have our, our, our KLA data, inline parametric <coughs> data, and all the other data from the fabs, along with wafer sort data and final test data and systems data. With that, you can make a much more concrete decision about active guard bands. Inside the OT system, there is the ability to have algorithms that OT creates. That allows you to minimize the escapes from quality failures that get out into the field. That is the value of the end-to-end -end loop. With those algorithms improving and controlling, that allows us to manipulate the data in more holistic fashion so that we can, to our customers' requirements, change how we sort parts. Because today it's about making the customer at the end of the world happy with your part. And that may mean you have to have six to ten different wafer sort programs because every customer has a slightly different view on the world of how they want their product coming in. But in this increasing age of commoditization of your products, the ability to meet a customer's specific demands and not destroy yourself of cost or quality is a way of proving uniqueness and allowing you to create, keep, keep some value in your product. Data is exploding. When you look at one billion parts, as you saw earlier, our MSM volumes have been going up, but our, our data volumes have been going up way significantly faster than our volume growth. Our data volumes are going up at about 1.5x year over year. When you look at the data, something like 1.5 terabytes a month. That's an amazing amount of data for anybody. How do, you, how do your engineers possibly gather that data and analyze it from a systems point of view? And from a wafer store point of view, yes, it's, it's, relative, it's a contained data set. Final test, it's a contained data set. Assembly, it's a contained data set. Uh, system model test, it's a contained data set. All of them are contained. But when you're trying to do cross-correlation to make your customer happy, you have to have a tool that is, has the ability to drive from one end to the other. Simple case in data mining. We had 10 RMAs. They were from 10 different wafer lots. 10 different wafer lots. All randomly distributed when you look at them. So there was no correlation. But when you applied the nearest neighbor algorithm, as was straight out of the box, Four of the 10 RMAs correlated the first time. When you played with the algorithm a little bit, we got six out of 10 to correlate. So data mining. The key takeaway is decisions impacting data is important for success. If you can't make good decisions, the value of your data is meaningless. So that's the key takeaway. Value is in how good you can make your decisions. A little bit about quality. Today, the standard flow of uh, ending up in scrap. How do you control it? Uh, constant quality improvement starts with inline processing to be able to drive all this data. Uh, ugly die, which are the edge die, and sometimes center die are, the, are quality risks because they have a, a variability. They may pass your specs. They may fail at the customer. How do you control that? Using the optimal test solution and the software tools that are embedded in it now, we are looking at feed forward data collection systems that allow us to take the wafer, the PCM parameters, the inline parametric parameters, <coughs> the wafer sort data, and all the other data that's gathered along the line to make consecutive decisions and forward looking decisions 
about whether or not that dye is good enough. Or we can pass a dye, wait for sort, fail a dye at the final test, even though it meets all the criteria because we believe it's a quality risk. We can then downbin that part to a separate product tier where it's perfectly good, but if it's for a, pro a premier product tier where uh, the customer's going to use it at the max temperature, max voltage, etc., you have to have a little bit more margin. But you don't want to just fail it because that's just cost out the door. Using the system, we can make those decisions and make them real time. You don't have to have an engineer on every lot. We can write with standard rules that allow us to forward leverage these decisions. And the rules are good across product line, across an entire product. Uh, they're sometimes good across product lines. We have about 12 rules that run on every product. Next steps, big data challenges. Terabytes of data. No matter how good your system is, with terabytes of data, it's too slow. So we're pushing on OT to make the data system faster, more forgiving, more user-friendly, uh, manipulating multiple databases, new data sources, multi-chip products. As we move forward, we are gathering data from DRAM manufacturers to cross-correlate to digital parts. Because as DRAM manufacturing line moves, now your product as delivered to the customer, if you deliver the digital MPU to the system, and it's the DRAM that back, who's blamed? Anybody know? MPU guy. Trust me, trust me. It's never the, it's never the DRAM, it's always the MPU guy. So you have to start gathering data from the DRAM manufacturers about their parametric performance. So that you now can say, oh, my part's perfect, your part's marginal, oh, the two together are bad. But you have to have that data in a high volume cell phone world anyway, to be able to go to your customer and say, this is what we need to do together as partners to make your system work. It's a different way of looking at value in a system and problem solving, because it's not your problem. You can just say, hey, it's a DRAM guy. But you still want those cell phones to sell, because that's the key at the end of the day. So the key takeaways are process complexity, product complexity are exploding. Data volume is exploding faster than either product complexity or process complexity. To be able to deal with yield real time in early manufacturing, you have to have a very clear understanding of what all the parameters from wafer sort to the customer are. So bringing you back to this one slide and leaving you here, the quality vision statement, OT's tool, is about an end-to-end -end systems data. Why does Qualcomm like it, and why do I like it, more importantly, is it allows me to go from wafer sort to the customer, to the customer, and back again. Active control mechanisms that we can implement all the way along the way. That's what the value proposition is. And that's why you have to have a tool that allows you to data mine across a very wide metrics of data, rapidly and in a very time.